Hello, and welcome to Discover Stories on Reimagine Radio. I'm your host, Graham Wyman, with the Vancouver Adapted Music Society. Today on the podcast, we feature three different areas of the Disability Foundation, continuing from where we left off last week. Today, we are focusing on volunteer opportunities, the Vancouver Adapted Music Society's new studio, and the Connectra Society's upcoming events. Let's get started. Welcome back to the next segment of our very special Discover Stories podcast. At this junction, I am joined by the program coordinator for Connectra, Emily Chambers. Emily, welcome to the pod. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. (laughs) Great. So um, we've got uh, our really first major in-person event happening with Connectra this year our abilities expo. Um, I just wanted to ask the question, what has the energy been like in preparing for abilities expo since uh, the last one in 2019? Yeah, it's been a while. So um, I'd say we're kind of starting from the ground up. It's been very exciting to think about getting together in person and getting to sort of see people in real life that we've been seeing online over the last year, year and a half. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, a lot of excited energy and it's just been busy, but it's going to be awesome. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Very excited. And the name for this particular Abilities Expo is Reconnect 2022. Maybe you could tell our listeners a little bit about what the name entails. Yeah, I think that the overall arching theme when we were discussing it for everyone was just sort of getting to be together in person again, just reconnecting with one another, with our vendors and other like-minded organizations that, you know, have supported us and we support. It's just sort of an opportunity for us to all reconnect with one one another and meet some new people along the way. Right. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, can you tell us a little bit about the programming that we can expect on May 25th? There's a lot going on. Um, We have 31 different vendors. Um, We also have six different artists. So we're going to have an artist alley showcasing the art of um, artists living with disabilities, and they'll be able to sell their art as well. Uh, We have vendors, you know, all over the place from uh, our partners like SCIBC and uh, Wheelchair Basketball Sports to some new people coming out. Um, We have Douglas College as one of our main sponsors. Uh, We also have Fresh Prep that is coming. Uh, We're going to have presentations, six different presentations. Um, One is on gaming and accessibility. We have one by the Canadian Mental Health Association on sort of bouncing back from the pandemic and tips and tools to move forward. Pain BC is doing a presentation. Ryan Clarkson's going to be doing a presentation on accessible camping, which is going to be really cool. Um, yeah, there's a whole array of things going on. It runs from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's going to be a jam-packed day of fun. There's going to be lunch served. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be great. No, and lots, lots to look forward to. Um, so what do you hope that uh, our community gets out of this year's expo? Yeah, I hope our community leaves feeling um, inspired and excited with maybe some new tools to move forward with. And also, you know, introduced to some new organizations and programs that are catered towards people living with disabilities. We're also talking much more about invisible disabilities and mental health, probably more than we have before. So Mm -hmm. I hope that our um, sort of like current clientele will be expanded and Mm -hmm. we'll be able to benefit from some of the new resources that we're bringing to the forefront. Right, and okay, no, that's great. Now, are there any regulations that attendees of the event should be aware of? 
So we are very mindful that we're moving into the next um, sort of open stage for COVID and grateful for it. But um, we also want everyone to feel safe and comfortable. So at this time, we are keeping up with whatever the provincial health mandates are. Um, there will not be masks required, although we do have a survey question when people register that if you would feel more comfortable with the staff and volunteers wearing masks, if that comes in, you know, as sort of a resounding yes, we will, of course, wear them. You are welcome to wear your mask if you like, of course. And at this time, everyone will be required to show proof of vaccination to attend the event. That includes our presenters and our vendors. So okay. doing our best to keep everyone safe. Of course. No, very important. Very important. Well, Emily, thank you so much for joining us today on Discover Stories. And uh, again, for our listeners, on May 25th at the Roundhouse Community Center from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., the Reconnect 2022 Abilities Expo will be happening. Is there anything yeah. else you'd like to say before we take off? We'll see you all there. All right. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, Graham. So for our next segment on Discover Stories, I'm joined by Development and Communications Officer for the Disability Foundation, Jordan Cripps. Jordan, how are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you, Graham. Well, thank you for joining us and uh, to talk a little bit about your time with the Vancouver Adaptive Music Society and more specifically, the first phase of the studio renovation. So Jordan, I just wanted to get your insight as a fundraiser and a communications officer around how do you see a project like the new studio renovation impacting the disabled music community and why is it important to have ex an accessible or safe place like this for our clients to create? Uh, well, I think it's really one of the messages that we always like to sort of talk about is that everybody can play music and that's kind of what BAMS is all about. Um, mm -hmm. And by creating the studio that we are currently working on and, and finishing up. Uh, I think what it does is it gives us the opportunity to have more people coming through the, through the studio, um, both at the same time and just generally, the, the number of people that we can support and and help explore their musical passions is, uh, is growing. Um, so that's always gonna be a good thing. Um, take all of my hats, both on the development and the communication side, you know, that's, um, the bigger the impact that we can have, the better um, is really what it amounts to. The more people that are um, receiving uh, lessons or are recording albums or rehearsing for a, a concert um, in our new space, the, the better, really. Yeah. Yeah, no, I couldn't full heartedly agree in the fact that, uh, again, the studio is four times the size. We are slowly being able to accommodate more and more musicians. Um, so what have been some of the challenges fundraising for the new studio? Um, well, just uh, with any sort of fundraising, it's where's the money going to come from, of the course. timeline, yeah. um, uh, that you need to have the money sort of in place. Um, it's, uh, it's always tricky to sort of, sort of figure out the right ways to approach fundraising, um, to to know what's going to work in a particular situation. Do we write a whole bunch of grants? Do we do a, uh, a personal appeal to some of our followers and supporters that have supported us in the past? Do we do a kind of hybrid um, uh, fundraising approach, which is what we sort of ended up doing. Um, and we got some really nice support uh, across the board from different organizations and people. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's always sort of is the tricky thing is sort of to know the right approach for whatever it is you're working on. Um, the way that the scheduling ended up playing out, um, sort of not, not kind of knowing exactly when we needed to have all of the, the fundraising piece in place um, and sort of knowing what the deadlines were to sort of work backwards from is sort of a, a challenge. You sort of are a little bit going at things without the full vision of what the, the time is going to look like. Mm -hmm. And and I guess as well, when it came to grants, I know one thing that we kept, uh, I guess, uh, um, coming, uh, or I guess one issue that you and I um, came across 
that seemed more consistently throughout the seven years that it took to get phase one done was, um, again, grants that would allow us to do bricks and mortar. Yeah, and that's for it. sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's it, one of the things you always encounter with any sort of grant exploration is that people only fund certain aspects of whatever your project is. And so you need to really make sure that the people you're going to, the organizations you're going to, um, have a good alignment with what it is you're trying to accomplish. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's certainly something we encountered where um, people were, organizations and, and um, people would fund parts of what we were trying to do, um, but not the whole thing or um, not the, the key elements of, of the renovation. So we did mm-hmm. have to sort of do a lot of assessing of the right people to approach and right. the right approaches to go to them with um, mm-hmm. to make sure that we were covering all of our bases as best we could. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know uh, the fact that we've we've got phase one completed is so exciting. And so I just wanted to ask what your thoughts were around what what do you hope the future uh, or what are your hopes for the future with the new studio? So yeah, I know we've had conversations around this where it may even be able to have you know the, uh, a small concert in the studio or um, creating more content from our performers that work that work with us, um, giving more lessons to people. All of those things uh, I think will be helped by the new studio where we have more space, we have more uh, ability to adapt it to better suit our clientele. Um, Mm -hmm. I think that that's really what I uh, anticipate us getting out of it is really just the the flexibility and the ability to support and uh, and deliver our programs in an environment that really meets our needs um, Mm -hmm. uh, as fully as possible. Mm -hmm. No, and and touching on that as well, just seeing seeing how the programs grow, the fact that we will have a space and, and as, as we move forward that could only become more accessible as we understand the better needs of the community. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's something that we can definitely do um, moving forward is to do a bit more of that kind of assessment of what any gaps might be and how we can we can fill those gaps in terms of what our, our, our clients and the people that we work with need um, in, the, in the studio space. Um, and and figure out ways to address that. Mm -hmm. No, that's great. And uh, Jordan, well, thank you for being on Discover Stories today. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Absolutely. uh, Well, I'm I'm sure we'll have you on again in the future. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Welcome back, everyone, to another section of our very special Discover Newsletter, Discover Stories podcast. For this segment, I'm joined by Cheryl Rose Newman, the volunteer coordinator with the Disability Foundation. Thank you for joining us, Cheryl. Thanks for inviting me, Graham. Yeah, no, good to see you. So uh, I was just wondering if you could perhaps tell our listeners, just to start us off, about some of the different volunteer opportunities that we have at the Disability Foundation and at six affiliated societies. Yes, so we do have different volunteering opportunities with each of our seven organizations. Uh, This is a combination of both in-person and virtual volunteering. Mm -hmm. As you know, summer is almost here and we are opening our summer program starting May 25. So for those who love the outdoors, we have hiking, kayaking, paddleboarding and cycling programs with BC Mobility Opportunity Society. Mm -hmm. Um, We have sailing and land volunteering with ASABC or Adopted Sailing Association. Mm -hmm. And those who are passionate about gardening, they can volunteer with DICA or the Disabled Independent Gardeners Association, either to maintain our gardens or to provide one-on-one assistance to our participants. Mm -hmm. Um, I also mentioned we also have volunteer or virtual opportunities like data entry, we have research, Mm -hmm. content writing, there's also social media, grant writing, or fundraising. We also need technical volunteers who can assist in workshops and forums with Connectra and DIGA 
Right. And of course, we also have the virtual volunteering with VAM, <laughs> yeah. either, either as a music teacher on piano or on guitar. And we are also looking right now for a singing or voice instructor. So basically, as long as I know what are the skills and interests of potential volunteers, there's always something for everyone. And just to follow up on that question, um, you don't necessarily just need to volunteer with one society. Is that correct? You could potentially volunteer with a couple or more. Yes, that is, a cor- that is correct. So once you're a volunteer with us, you can be a volunteer for different organizations. Mm-hmm. So sometimes somebody would just find what our website on BCMOS, like they're interested with hiking. Then during the orientation, uh, I would tell that we have other programs and they realize, hey, I also like to do kayaking, paddling, and sailing. So once a volunteer, uh, they can always sign up for different opportunities and programs within all seven organizations. Right. And so just touching on the article that was around a call to action for volunteers in the Discover newsletter, you mentioned the specific need for photography, videography, and social media. Uh, why is the foundation uh, looking for this particular skill set? Um, well, we've been looking for volunteers. I mean, we also have volunteers last year who would contribute their videos and pictures. Mm-hmm. And these are materials that we use. But right. this year, I am focusing on building a media team okay. uh, with skills on those three areas that you mentioned, photography, videography, and social media. Mm-hmm. As you know, we need a good number of volunteers who can capture the moment and action in our different summer programs. These pictures or videos are materials we can use to promote, to promote or market our program, not only to participants and to invite volunteers, but it's an awareness program for mm. the general public. Gotcha. So, you know, the more volunteers who can join us on this uh, media team, the better for us. Right. We will always need pictures and videos. Yeah, no, I mean, that's very exciting. I know with VAMS in particular, we we might need help with the virtual concerts, the filming of that, or yes. um, with DIGA, for instance, uh, taking photos in the gardener and of our gardeners working there and volunteers. So yeah, no, that's very exciting to thinking about the, uh, the media team. Yes, yes. I'm looking forward to it because uh, we have... Uh, skilled and professional volunteers who sign up already. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a good summer for us. No, that's fantastic. So um, over the years, many volunteers have come back to support our societies. I just was wondering, why do you think that is? Well, we do have dedicated volunteers who come back year after year. Mm -hmm. Like with ASADC, our sailing volunteers had been with us for about three to eight years, oh, wow. some probably even longer. Mm-hmm. So we also have consistent volunteers with our hiking program, our kayaking. Right. Um, there's this one particular volunteer. She's been uh, our, our top volunteer for the past three years. Okay. Like she loves hiking so much. Mm-hmm. Um, our volunteers love our activities and programs. And not only do they get the opportunity to enjoy the outdoors, the big joy actually comes from helping and making a, making a difference in our in the lives of our participants. Of course. That is the magic there. They mm-hmm. help reimagine what is possible for people with disabilities. And I guess that's the reason they keep coming back year after year. Yeah, and I know without our volunteers, you know, a lot of these programs would have trouble uh, trouble sustaining as long as we have been with the foundation. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, like where all of our programs really run with the support and contribution of our dedicated volunteers. Mm-hmm. So now, if someone was interested in volunteering with the Disability Foundation, what is the best way to go about that? Well, I do would welcome new volunteers. Um, the best way to join us is to visit our uh, volunteer page and all of our different websites. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can register and sign up there as a volunteer, or they can email me directly at volunteer at disabilityfoundation.org. Okay. Oh, that's great. Well, Cheryl, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today about a very important part of the Disability Foundation and how we run our programs at our six affiliated societies. Yes, thank you so much too, Graham. 
All right. Take care.